This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 300, Financial Freedom, by Joshua Fields Milburn and Ryan Nicodemus of TheMinimalists.com. And I am your host and narrator of the show, Dan. I'm here each weekday reading to you from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet. And uh, as I mentioned yesterday, today is a bit of a milestone for us. It is episode 300. And uh, in honor of that, Justin from Optimal Living Daily is going to step in to give me a little break. I'm actually going to play an excerpt from a book that he narrated for The Minimalists. The book is called Essential Essays by The Minimalists, and there is a chapter in there about finances. So the piece you're going to hear is straight from there. And we are actually going to give away a copy of this book tonight to a random person on our mailing list. So if you are not yet a part of the list, come by oldpodcast.com and uh, enter your email address. And I'll give you a reminder about that at the end. So for now, let's go to Justin with an excerpt from the audiobook as we optimize your life. Financial freedom. Money. It tears families apart, ruins marriages, and keeps people from pursuing their dreams. Money troubles inject unnecessary stress, anxiety, and arguments into our daily lives, which keeps us in perpetual discontent. We never seem to have enough, and living paycheck to paycheck, we can't ever get ahead. But it doesn't have to be this way. We, Joshua and Ryan, know firsthand. The road to financial freedom was a long trek for each of us. Even though we had prestigious six-figure careers, we struggled with money back then. We weren't financially free for a long time. It wasn't until we walked away from those careers, after devising a plan, of course, that we discovered how to get out of debt, how to eliminate unnecessary expenses, how to plan for our future, how to master our finances. While we all need to make money to live, and there's certainly nothing wrong with earning a great salary, taking control of your financial life involves much more than adjusting your income upward. It involves making repeated good decisions with the resources you have, changing your financial habits, and living deliberately. None of which is inherently easy, especially under the tyranny of today's instant gratification culture. But fortunately, regaining control of your finances is simple. A few years ago, overwhelmed by money's rapacious tug on our lives, the two of us decided to change. We decided to take back control of our finances and our lives. These are the five steps we took, and they are the same principles we use today to ensure we'll never again struggle with money. Number one, budget. Most of us have no idea where our money is going. We think we know, but we don't really know. This is doubly true for those of us who are married or live with a significant other. So the first step toward financial freedom is establishing a written monthly budget. Note the three key words here, written, monthly, and budget. A few guidelines. Categories. Identify what's truly necessary by identifying all of your monthly expenses based on the past six months, and then divide your expenses into three categories, as outlined in the preceding essay, Need, Want, Like. Write down every expense, food, housing, utilities, insurance, cars, gas, transportation, clothes, credit cards, phones, internet, pets, entertainment, etc. Triple check the list with your significant other or a friend, and then use your need, want, like categories to prioritize and cut wherever you can. The stricter you are, the sooner you'll be free. Boundaries. Give every dollar a destination at the beginning of the month. By establishing these boundaries, you won't worry about what you can and can't purchase because money that wasn't assigned at the beginning of the month can't be spent mid-month. Teamwork. Everyone in your household, even your children, must have a say in the written budget. This is the only way to get every person's buy-in. Working together means taking from one category to fund another, e.g. extracting money from, say, your clothing budget to fund your entertainment budget, until each person is on the same page. Once everybody is on board, once everyone is committed to financial freedom, it is much easier to gain the traction you need. Adjust. You'll have some slip-ups along the way, and that's all right, it's part of the process. At first, you and your family should scrutinize your written budget daily, and eventually weekly, adjusting accordingly until your whole family is comfortable with your set monthly allocations. The first month is the most difficult, but by the third month, you'll curse yourself for wasting so much money during your budgetless days. Safety. Shit happens, so it's best to create a safety net savings account with $500 to $1,000 for emergencies. Now listen, do not touch this money unless there is a true emergency, car repairs, medical bills, job loss, etc. Your safety net will allow you to stay on budget, even when life punches you in the face. Over time, once you're out of debt, step three below, your safety net will grow to include several months of income. 
But for now, worry only about the first $500 to $1,000 to start, which you want to keep in a separate safety net account to avoid temptation. Number two, pay yourself, invest. Most of us hear the word invest and we panic. Investing seems so complicated, so abstract, so not something I can wrap my head around. Instead of thinking of it as investing money, think of it as paying your future self. And with today's online tools, you needn't be overwhelmed. Investing is easier than ever. Anyone can and must do it. As for Joshua and Ryan, we both use a simple online investment tool as our personal savings, planning, and investing software. We invest our money into four separate buckets using an online software. Safety net, retirement fund, house fund, and wealth building fund. Visit theminimalist.com forward slash freedom to learn more about our specific investment strategy, as well as some free tools we use to keep us on track. Right now is the best time to start planning for your future. Whether you're planning for retirement, wanting to start a business, saving for a home, building a larger safety net, or focusing on long-term wealth building, now is the best time to begin. Not next week, not even tomorrow, today. Even if you have no money to invest, you must devise a plan to begin investing in your future self. The best way to do this is to automate your investments, which takes the guesswork out of investing. The future won't wait. Do it today. Even if that means 1% of your income or even $20 a month to start, your future self will thank you. Number three, debt-free. Contrary to what some academics might tell you, there is no such thing as good debt. Let's say that again. Say it out loud. There is no such thing as good debt. Some debt is worse than other debt, but it's never good. You will not feel free until you are debt-free. The debtor is always slave to the lender. Besides, it feels amazing to have no car payments, no credit card payments, and no student loan payments looming in the shadows of your lifestyle. Throughout our 20s, we both had excessive piles of debt, more than six figures each. It was a debilitating feeling, a complete loss of freedom. Although there are no magic bullets, the strategy we've seen work best is Dave Ramsey's book, Total Money Makeover, a detailed step-by-step formula that both of us use to create a detailed plan, cut up our credit cards, and face our debts head-on. You can also read Joshua's debt-free story at theminimalist.com forward slash debt. Number four, minimize. Of course, minimalism was a key component in our own journeys toward financial freedom. By clearing the clutter from our lives, we were able to focus on eliminating debt, changing our habits, and making better decisions with fewer resources. We also learned that by simplifying, by identifying which material possessions weren't adding value to our lives, we were able to more quickly become debt-free by selling more than half our stuff locally, yard sales, consignment shops, flea markets, and online, eBay, Craigslist, AutoTrader. No, minimalism is not about deprivation. We don't want anyone to quote-unquote live without in the name of minimalism but sometimes it makes sense to temporarily deprive ourselves of temporary satisfactions when we are attempting to move our lives in a better direction. For example, as we were tackling our debts, Joshua sold his oversized house and moved into a tiny apartment. Ryan sold his fancy new car and purchased a decade-old vehicle without a monthly payment. We both jettisoned our cable subscriptions, satellite radio, and other luxury bills, which saved us hundreds of dollars each month. We also did quote-unquote strange things like deliver pizzas, work overtime, and find other ways to supplement our income in the short term so we could pay off our debts faster. Plus, we sold hundreds of items, electronics, furniture, clothes, DVDs, books, collectibles, tools, yard equipment, that weren't essential, and we used that money to further pay down our debts. Anything that wasn't nailed to the floor found its way to eBay. Now everything we own serves a purpose or brings us joy and we don't miss any of the trinkets of yesteryear. Don't know how to start minimizing? Visit our Start Here page at theminimalist.com forward slash start for tips and best practices. Number five, contribute. The shortest path toward freedom is appreciating what you already have. One of the best ways to find gratitude for the gifts you've already been given is to change your perspective. To do so, donate your most precious asset, your time. Bring your family to a local soup kitchen, food bank, or homeless shelter. Tutor less privileged children in your city. Help the elderly with groceries or in-home care. Work on low-income houses with Habitat for Humanity. There are more resources than ever to help you contribute beyond yourself. Just do an internet search for volunteer opportunities in your area. Whatever you do to build your contribution muscle, it needn't be grandiose. It need only contribute to someone else's life. If you do this for a few weeks, you'll realize your financial problems are tiny compared to many of the problems in the world around you. By discovering the smallness of your financial woes, 
you'll feel empowered to take massive action and beat the crap out of your relatively miniature problems. In a short period of time, two or three years, your entire life can radically transform from what it is today. All it takes is a plan, which you now have, determination, i.e. turning your shoulds into musts, and consistent action in the right direction. Conclusion, simple ain't easy. Financial freedom isn't easy, but you knew that before hearing this essay. The exciting part about these five principles is they apply to anyone, anywhere on the socioeconomic ladder. Whether you earn minimum wage or six figures, whether you are single or have half a dozen children, we have seen these principles work for thousands of people because it's not about our income level, it's about the decisions we make with the resources we have. You are now equipped with a recipe to make outstanding financial changes. You are obviously welcome to add your own ingredients to taste, but when it comes to true financial freedom, these five ingredients, budget, invest, eliminate debt, minimize, contribute, are non-negotiable. All five are necessary. Yes, you still have a considerable amount of research and planning and hard work ahead of you, but most important, you have to take action today. Diligence is paramount. You just listened to an excerpt from the audiobook Essential, Essays by the Minimalists by Joshua Fields Milburn and Ryan Nicodemus. And as I mentioned before, don't forget that today is your last chance to be on our mailing list before a drawing that is happening tonight. We're giving away this exact book by The Minimalist, and to be in the drawing and also to get a few easy-to-use financial spreadsheets from us, come by oldpodcast.com and simply enter your email address. That'll add you to our weekly newsletter where we give you some life tips, uh, some more freebies, and we host book raffles like this one every month. It's also a nice way to show some moral support uh, that you enjoy what you're hearing here. So again, come by oldpodcast.com and enter your email address for all of that. And that is 300 episodes down. Thank you all so much for your support and for listening every day. That is what has kept this podcast going along with your financial contributions. So here's to another 100 episodes and I'm going to be back with more posts for you next week. So have a great weekend, everybody, and I will catch you on Monday where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this podcast, but also Optimal Living Daily, the show where I read to you from even more blogs covering finance, productivity, minimalism, personal development, and more from incredible bloggers like Derek Sivers, Zen Habits, Mark and Angel, The Minimalists, and all the ones you hear on this show too. So if you enjoyed today's episode and like taking amazing blogs on the go, come on over to Optimal Living Daily and subscribe to that one too. And together, we'll start optimizing your life. You've been listening to Optimal Finance Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.